Hey, I'm Zach Vanoss. I'm the founder and director of Dinosaur Trips, uh, and very excited to be talking today with Dr. Brian Curtis, aka Dr. BC of Fossil Crates, who, um, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you know at this point, is leading a couple of our trips into the uh, American Southwest this spring. In May, we'll be in Arizona and California for a nine-day trip called uh, Route 66 Million Years Ago. That's going to be a very exciting. And then he's leading us uh, through Utah and Colorado as well for a eight-day program um, that we're calling Red Rocks and Raptors. I'm really excited about both of these. I'm really excited to talk to Brian today about what we're going to be doing uh, on these itineraries, particularly from the paleo angle, which is your expertise. And I wanted to talk to you about this, Brian, because uh, to give people a little sense of the behind the scenes of dinosaur trips, we've been talking for a long time now about uh, getting you in as a paleo expert for this. Um, you know, you've got uh, an infectious charisma of enthusiasm for paleontology, for fossils, for dinosaur bones that I think people are really going to uh, enjoy as we go through these adventures. Uh, and for me, that translated to you getting me really excited about looking at these destinations as the next spots for us to go to. We started in Alberta in 2023 in the summer with our first trips. And as we're looking, okay, where do we branch out? Where does Dinosaur Trips go next? Uh, in conversations with you, it became apparent that look, the, the US Southwest, uh, particularly Utah, Colorado, California, and Arizona, that's where we gotta go. These are where the museums people wanna see are. These are where some of the great discoveries in paleontological history have happened. Uh, and in talking with you about all of this, it became obvious to me you know, that this is where we had to go. This is where we have to start. Spring 2024, we're going to be going uh, on these two experiences led by you, getting your expertise, getting your insight, getting your access to some of these museums and research centers. So um, thrilled to have you on board, thrilled to have you leading these things. And uh, we're gonna start in this first video today, we're gonna take a look at, at our Route 66 million years ago exploration of Arizona and California from May 2nd to 10th. Uh, welcome, welcome to Dinosaur Trips as our paleo expert. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's rock through these itineraries and, and, and tell people what we're gonna find out. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I am so excited. Uh, this is a trip of my dreams as well. I'm, uh, I've, we've selected a number of facilities that we're going to get some special access to. And day, our first museum trip is going to start off, or our first museum is going to be the Arizona Museum of Natural History, a place that I'm a research associate out of, near and dear to my heart. And breaking news, in fact, Today, uh, back and forth, we have almost completed our submission for some 85 million year old tyrannosaurid teeth that we found down in southern Arizona. So we have an active research campaign going on, and I'll jump to the behind the scenes access first. What we'll be able to do uh, is to go across the street where folks don't even know we have this, we call it the annex, and we'll go inside the collections of the Arizona Museum of Natural History. And we're going to get to see the holotypes of Suski Tyrannus, which is the coyote tyrant. It's on display, the cast, but you're going to get to see the actual bones that the name's tied to, as well as Zuni Ceratops, another adorable horned Ceratopsian who was found in New Mexico. And we have the bones that the holotypes in the collection. So you'll be able to look at those. And then the holotype of Jawadi, which is a hadrosaur. And we don't have that on display. There's none mounted. So you'll be, the only place you can see it is when we open the drawers and show off what we have. And you'll also get to see the other materials that have been collected in Arizona. There is beautiful glyptodon armor, which are these great, think of a, a mammalian turtle the size of a car. These are beautiful creatures, a giant armadillo in a, in a way of looking at it. Uh, we've got a variety of mammoth pieces and the collections themselves, though not grandiose in comparison to many more universities, because we are very um, new in the grand scheme of the paleontological entities, the, our museum is very new, but we what we make up for is three holotypes right out of the gate. So guests will get to experience what it's like to be in the collection from day one, and they'll get to see the actual holotypes. For, for paleontologists, the holotypes are the specimens you have to go fly in to look at and touch and study when you're making comparisons. They're the reference bones that all the other research ties to. They're the super special components, and you almost never get to touch them or look at them as a non-researcher because they are so important, they're sequestered away. But we'll crack the box open 
and uh, you'll get to see some really neat bones. I'm excited about the, the, I mean, obviously dinosaur trips, I got the love for paleontology and dinosaurs, but I really, and I think on this trip in particular, we're going to get to see a lot of uh, before and after dinosaurs as well. I mean, we'll get to the La Brea tar pits in a little bit on this video and talk about that, but I'm excited about the mammoth stuff. Uh, it's we're, The day before, as we're, as we're in Phoenix, we'll be having uh, some mammoth burgers at the Mammoth Steakhouse, so we'll be anticipating that. Everything's along with the theme, but I'm really excited for, for the Arizona Museum of Natural History because, like you say, it's, it's kind of your home field uh, and, and a great place for us to start this experience and, and get a sense of what we're going to what we're going to be seeing. Talk to me a little more, a little bit more about the Arizona Museum of Natural History. So, um, for those who have no concept of, of what this museum is, obviously we're going to get some incredible access. You're going to pull some drawers open for us and get us past what the, what the regular admission gets you. But uh, in an overall sense, what are we looking for? What are we looking at here? Yeah, so the Arizona Museum of Natural History is, it started off as the Mesa Southwest Museum. Okay. And it was the original Mesa jail. And around the jail, it was a historical center, and it slowly grew uh, and, and accumulated additional space as it took on more and more anthropological artifacts. So if you like anthropology, if you like Native American culture, the museum has a wonderful display of Native American buildings and huts and how they were constructed. And we have a huge archaeological collection as well. Uh, lots and lots of items on display. We've had active research in the in, in conjunction with the Mesa Verde, uh, which is one of the largest Native American dig sites uh, anywhere in the U.S. And it's in the city. It's a few miles from the museum. So the museum itself is is multifunctional and multi-researching. We're actually adding a new uh, biology and ecology wing and division here in the next few in the next year. This year. So that's it's been talking about it a while. But for visitors, for us, we're going to walk in and see an incredible museum. It's one of my favorites. Yes, I'm slightly biased. I'm born and raised here. It's it's my home museum. I'm an I'm, I work there. But at the same time, it's neat because you're going to get to see not only dinosaurs, but the animals that came before the dinosaurs. We have one of the best collections of weird Permian animals, a lot of Russian animals that live right before the dinosaurs. We have some really cool life restorations of the aquatic animals that lived in Arizona. So I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but there's some pretty cool things you'll see. And it's going to get a vision. One of the cool things about this trip is the museums play off one another. And the next museum we go to is the Petrified Forest. Yeah. And you're going to get to see a life restoration of what the petrified forest looked like with a couple of the animals whose cast you're going to see the next day. So you're going to get to see the life of what we interpreted in a full size environment. It's really cool. And then 24 hours later, you'll be staring at the cast and the actual trees themselves. But Arizona Museum has a wonderful dinosaur display. And we have this great exhibit that talks of it, that showcases the history of ceratopsians and the history of tyrannosaurs. And why is because in the Southwest, uh, we've been rewriting the textbooks on tyrannosaur history and ceratopsian origins in the last decade or so. In fact, just today, I saw two hours ago, uh, Tyrannosaurus macraeensis, the, the new species of tyrannosaur was published. It came out and it came from New Mexico. And Dr. Robert McCord that you all meet, he's the paleontologist at the museum. He and I are submitting a paper on 85 million year old tyrannosaurid teeth from Southern Arizona. So we keep adding to the story of everyone thinks T-Rex and it's up in the Alberta and Montana and it was 66 million years ago. Susie Tyrannus is 90 million years old. There was no reason, no one thought we would find a tyrannosauroid that old in this part of the world. It was thought that it came over from Asia and it was a real simple origin and we kicked the apple cart order over. And not only did we do it with Suski, the coyote tyrant, but also Zuni ceratops. We found a, at the time, 90 million years ago, all these ceratopsians were bipedal. They're running around in Mongolia. And then we find a full on quadrupedal, big brow horns ceratopsian, a, a little cousin of triceratops, in a time and a place it wasn't ever imagined to be. So if you're wondering about where to go paleo, you don't have to go to exotic locales. 
you just need to go to new formations in places that are reasonably easy to get to. All right. So that's, as I said, that's kind of your home base. You're going to be unlocking that for us in a big way. The next day we're headed off to the Petrified National Forest uh, for day three. We're going to do newspaper rock. We got petroglyphs. So across this trip, it's not all paleontology all the time. You know, in this part of the world, there's so much archaeology to be looking at. We're going to be doing awesome hikes throughout it. Uh, day four, we're headed over to Sunset Crater Volcano and the Grand Canyon. I don't think we need to talk up the Grand Canyon uh, in this conversation. I think people have a pretty good sense of that. But we'll also be uh, visiting the Yavape, correct my pronunciation on any of these, uh, Geology Museum. Uh, Yavapai. Rocks. Say again? The Yavapai. Yavapai. It's one of, it's, it's one of the, the, the peoples that live out here. One of the tribes is the Yavapai. And that's a small museum that does a wonderful job of discussing the spectacle that's behind you. When you are looking, it's built on the edge of the canyon. So you look out the window and you see the canyon and then you turn around and they have these beautiful dioramas of what you're looking at. So it it puts, it, tr it tries, it does as good a job as a person's going to be able to do or an exhibit's going to do of putting one of nature's wonders of the world. And if you haven't seen the Grand Canyon, uh, I just read an article in a magazine called Arizona Highways, and the punchline is, since that magazine has been around, since people have found the Grand Canyon, minus the original explorers who were just mad that it wasn't the seven cities of gold, the, uh, of, of the, the Native Americans love it. There's no words for it. Let me put it another way. If you love the, it, when you see the Grand Canyon, you're speechless, and writers have yet to capture its grandeur. Well, so that just, was something I struggled with, you know, putting together, obviously, the materials to promote these trips and give people a sense of what they're doing. And when you're looking through photos, there's literally millions, if not billions of pictures of the Grand Canyon available. Endless amounts of pictures. Obviously, you go there, you take a picture, you're trying to capture it. None of them are very good. None of them, you know, they can look pretty nice, but they don't none of them get close in any way i mean if pictures can't words maybe maybe the greatest poets could have a chance at it but it it doesn't seem that way it seems like it's be there experience it otherwise you're never going to fully comprehend what this is 277 miles long mile deep and it's four billion years of time represented in, in this gash in the ground there's no way you can encapsulate its incredulousness except excuse me except as almost a spiritual experience standing there with the wind blowing if you get a, a quiet moment with it and we'll be going through toro weep as well which is a really cool tower uh, there has been tremendous pushback from the earliest days to prevent people from building on the grounds because it wasn't always a national park and people had mining rights and land rights and uh, over time those have all gone away but Toro Weep is still there, and it, it was done in such an anachronistic way that it, it's fun and exciting. You're like, all right, I'll, I'll give you Toro Weep. We don't have to tear that one down as they try to go through and and you know bring the canyon back to its pre-invasion glory. Um, on that same day, uh, actually, before we get to Grand Canyon National Park and Museum, we will be doing Sunset Crater Volcano. So we won't speak too much to that, but, you know, it's volcanoes, it's lava flows, it all, it's all feeding into this narrative we got going from prehistory and geology oh. and everything else that we're bringing into this experience. I have to say, I love Sunset Crater. It's great. And one of my favorite things about Sunset Crater is it, it captures lava rolling through plants and how plants have to deal. It, it, this whole trip, in a way, is talking about nature and yeah. evolution and plants have evolved in these next on these volcanoes and how would they surmount them and survive and then thrive in these desolate molten environs and when the rocks cool life comes back and this this repeating at the end of the permian almost every animal went extinct and then the dinosaurs appeared well first crocodiles for a while then the dinosaurs show up and you have these big extinction events over and over and that's just a micro extinction event. When a volcano blows up, it's a bad day for everything that was on the hill. So from there, we're headed towards another icon of the American Southwest, Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, we're going to be hitting up Route 66, which obviously gives its name to this trip. Uh, pure Americana Route 66. I've always, my whole life, 
um, you know, at least since I had some ability to imagine what it was and the iconic just signs that say Route 66, I wanted to kind of experience that. So we're going to be driving along there. We'll do Peach Springs, which is the inspiration if you've seen the Cars movie for Radiator Springs. So uh, and then we'll be doing the Hidden Valley, uh, Barker Dam National trail on that day as well and of course Nat joshua tree national park so you know we're gonna and we're getting to some few museums the next day as well again but just so people have a sense if you haven't you know had a chance to read through the itinerary or you're following along as you watch this video right now yeah museums yes great eating uh but also the you know some of the iconic either be it natural sites of the American Southwest or uh, cultural sites of the American Southwest right down to Route 66 and really hitting the highway uh, as we get, as we explore, as you say, along this narrative that overall, the overall arching story of this trip is is the history of the, of the natural world in this part of the world and extinction events and what moves life forward and what moves, what moves evolution forward. And uh, moving our trip forward, day six, Western Science Center and the Raymond and Alf Museum of Paleontology, a double museum day. Uh, so you'll be you'll be in your glory on that one. You're really taking the lead for us on that day. Yeah. So the uh, Western Science Center is is amazing. You, you, I won't go into the history of how it came about. But suffice to say, only in America. And I'm okay. really glad it happened. Yeah. I, I don't want to spoil anything on this, except you, you'll be surprised how it went down. And the plan is. And I have to say the plan because uh, the time of year we're there, Andrew McDonald, Dr. Andrew McDonald is the paleontologist that is uh, named Dynamo Terror Dynasties, one of the coolest dinosaur names. And we're going to see that material. It's on display. They have one of the most incredible collections of mammoths and mastodons and mammals that you have around. And they have a rotating gallery. I'm not sure what we're going to see. And half the building is this beautiful rotation. And what I love about it is you show up and you're like, well, this is cool. And it's always neat. They have evolution of horses. They can tell a phenomenal story of the horse evolution from the fossils they have in their area. And the plan is to go into the collections itself and show off, in my opinion, one of my favorite, just visually impressive, modernized collections anywhere in the United States. The what they have done there is truly cutting edge uh, curation of specimens. And there's the Dynamo Terror holotype that you all should be seeing. So we should be able to get in. And yet again, holotypes for paleontologists are magical things. And to see this, this cousin of Tyrannosaurus, and the name Dynamo Terror is paying homage because Tyrannosaurus, some of its early bones were called Dynamosaurus. And so they said, well, I love that name. So then they put terror on the end of it. And it is a terror. It's a really great animal. Right. And we also got um, in there the Raymond M. Alf Museum of Paleontology. So what do we expect there? Oh, my goodness. So. Again, you're going to be your your senses will be challenged because you're going to enter a high school campus. The Raymond M, the Alf Museum of Paleontology is actually on a, a, a boarding school, and it is a circular building, which you're going to find is one of the cleverest uses of space. We'll meet Dr. Andy Farkey, who is one of the nicest people in the world, who's also an expert on ceratopsians and other dinosaurs. He's named a few. He is going to take us into the collections and you'll be able to see uh, in it, how their dinosaurs but and non-dinosaur remains are stored. You'll be able to, he'll open up some drawers. He'll show off one of the coolest Triceratops horn spikes that I've seen. And you'll get to probably hold that, pass it around. It's a really cool specimen. And hear about how high schoolers are getting the opportunity to work on dinosaurs, and I've saved the best for last. Joe, the baby Parasaurolophus, or Parasaurolophus if you prefer, the dinosaur with the huge crest coming on the back of its head that everyone knows and loves. Well, they found the first baby. Some A high school student that was on part of the expedition found this, and they worked on describing it. And so it's nicknamed Joe. It's the most complete baby Parasaurolophus. It's told us a tremendous amount about how these dinosaurs grew and how their horns, their, their crests work. And I am so excited to get back there and see that specimen with my own eyes again. The material's laid out so we can get right up on it. 
Amazing. And then day seven, we're really switching gears. Uh, this is kind of the, feels the opposite of the museum experience, the double museum experience that we're having uh, as we're hitting up Universal Studios. <laughs> so uh, we're the reason there, uh, obviously, to do the Jurassic World ride. Um, I'm excited about that. I didn't Unfortunately, I mean, in my opinion, unfortunately, the Jurassic Park ride isn't there anymore. I'm 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 more uh, into the Jurassic Park of it all, but I think it's going to be a really cool experience. I mean, we're going into California. We're going to Los Angeles. We got to do Universal Studios. I mean, you know, that's part of the fun, I think, of paleontology and dinosaurs is. Yeah, I mean, you're bringing the science stuff. You're giving us a chance to really educate ourselves and get up close and, you know, touch uh, some of the most incredible specimens that have ever been found. But, and I was talking about this on a podcast the other day that I, that I got to be a guest on, is you know, dinosaurs in particular spark the imagination in ways that have really, um, especially since we have invented film, the movies, um, we've tried to capture, we've tried to communicate, you know, from those, some of the earliest movies they were doing dinosaurs in, like those early King Kong movies, they wanted to represent dinosaurs. I mean, Godzilla's not a dinosaur, but in the imagination of humans, that they're kind of all in line there. You look at the excitement around Game of Thrones and dragons. People love these, the idea of these giant creatures. So Universal Studios gives us a chance to switch gears. I mean, if you're hitting up Los Angeles, yeah, absolutely. I think it's something you have to do. So that day is going to be all about that. Uh, I don't know if you have any special access. <laughs> Universal Studios I, to behind the scenes. <laughs> I've never <laughs> been to Universal Studios proper. I've been, they have a beautiful uh, a mall area outside of it that I've been to a number of times, but uh, California usually has great weather. The one time I tried to go, it was one of these giant storms rolled in and I didn't get to go. And that's always a risk you run on any trip you take is the wild card of weather and other world events. Yeah. Uh, another time there was an earthquake, we were going to go and it shut LA down. And so we said, yeah, we'll, we'll just stay here in Phoenix where we're safer at the time. But I'm excited to see, and you, you, you mentioned Jurassic Park. I mean, kids love dinosaurs everywhere, but Jurassic Park kicked the door open and, and sparked a renaissance of for paleontology that has no signs of slowing down. If anything, it's accelerating and it's it's broadened the appeal. And even for those folks that don't become paleontologists, what Universal Studios, Jurassic Park, all of these these visual media do is they get people interested in the STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And we need STEAM. We need STEM researchers. We need scientists. And dinosaurs are a, they're a gateway into science. They they quietly show taxonomy and how things go together and the and how time stacks. And by the time the person's done with their first dinosaur book, they know so much more about food systems and, and food webs, ecosystems, climate. It's amazing to see what dinosaurs teach without even meaning to. Yeah, that's what I, I found on our first dinosaur trips uh, experiences that we did in 2023 was just how much other stuff comes into it. Other sciences, um, really, you know, obviously geology, but everything you're speaking to, it really, it's it's a gateway in many ways, and it, and an exciting gateway for kids. Obviously, there's something about dinosaurs and paleontology that strike at the imagination um, in ways that I guess perhaps the other sciences don't as well. And you know, it, you won't be limited to Jurassic World the ride um, just because it's a dinosaur trip. So you want to check out the Harry Potter world or everything else that they got going on there. Uh, absolutely do. So that's going to be kind of a free day at Universal Studios for everybody uh, to kind of go out and explore the park in any way that they want to. But the next day, we're back at a double museum, double dose of museum, uh, Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County and the La Brea Tar Pits. Uh, this is our final day all together before we leave. And what a way to finish. The La Brea Tar Pits have been something I've wanted to experience since I was a kid as well. Uh, take us through these two museums and what we're going to get a chance to see there. Oh my goodness. Um, the LA County Museum is stupendous and it's not just about the dinosaurs of which it has an incredibly amazing hall. It, it is one of the best you're going to see and when we get there they may even have their new sauropod mounted, fingers crossed. I got to see it right the day it was leaving the next day and they were going to get it all put together and hopefully it'll be back. Uh, the, the museum itself, I'm working on some possible behind the scenes access. I, I didn't have it until just, you don't even know about this, just yesterday. 
Um, my buddy kicked me over uh, and reminded me of someone that I know. And so I'm waiting to see if they would be willing to uh, take us back and at least let folks see what the LA County collections look like. That is ultra hard, rare access. So if I can get that to happen, no promises on this one, but I'm doing what I can because it would be really cool. But even if we don't, the LA County Museum has not just dinosaurs. It has an astounding mammal hall of, of prehistoric mammals. Incredible. It, mammals you've never heard of. And it has on display some modern creatures like the Megamouth shark. They have, it's the first place I saw a Megamouth shark was in that museum. They have it in on, they, they just put it out on display. They, they capped, they one washed up dead and they ended up with it. So they have a neat hall of, I doubt we'll be able to see it all, yeah, the, but it is going to wet your whistle and you're going to, next time you're in LA, you're going to want to go back and see it. And then to close out with La Brea, La Brea Tar Pits has an oversized impact to, to little Brian here. When I was a very small lad, my parents took me to both of those places and La Brea Tar Pits there's a there's a stick in the tar that is always it would give me nightmares because it shows you how viscous it is and how impossible it would be for you to get out of the tar if you got in it. So you get to they, they, it's it's such a clever exhibit. It's so simple and so terrifying. And then you see what is the most incredible collection of skulls of dire wolves of saber tooth cats. They have sloths, they have giant birds, The and it's an active, ongoing research. So yeah. though we won't have any behind the scenes, we'll be able to see where there's tar in the park today. So there are tar, there's fences around spots on the grass so you don't get stuck. It is in the heart of one of the largest cities in the world is a live tar pit. It's the craziest thing. It is so cool. So there's no real dinosaurs there, but if you like mammals and everybody loves smiling on, this is a great way to end it moving into modern to modernity and talking about the ice age and climate change, how it ended the reign of some of the neatest animals that walked Western North America. No, for sure. I mean, there was no question for me when we were putting this itinerary together, whether or not we we're going to do the Brea Tar Pits. Uh, you know, I didn't have a moment where I was like, well, not a lot of dinosaurs. This is pretty mammals. We, no, of course, we're going to do La Brea Tar Pits. If you're into paleontology, it, it's an epic spot. I was just talking with uh, Catherine Abbott of the Royal Terrell Museum uh, for a Q&A, which you can find on dinosaurtrips.com for a working with dinosaurs piece. And she was just saying, you know, she got a chance to go down there um, for the premiere of Why Dinosaurs and visit La Brea Tar Pits as well. And she was saying in our chat, like, oh, my God, I, you so jealous you get to experience it for the first time again. It's really something. And it's, as you said, it's one of the rare museums. There's not a ton of museums on earth that are kind of within the active site where that the museum's about, you know? I mean, the Royal Terrell is another great example in the Badlands of Alberta, where you can walk across the parking lot and be like, here's where we found the things that, you, that you're seeing in this museum. So it's a pretty, I love that it's, we're finishing with it too, because it just works with the flow of time. Um, it takes us into that next evolution. We'll, we'll follow that up with uh, our final dinner, enjoy some drinks together, toast uh, what is going to be a epic journey before everybody flies home from Los Angeles the next day. Uh, but yeah, this is, I mean, for me, it's got me, I can't believe how excited I keep getting about these trips because obviously we've been working on them for a long time, going over the details, mapping it out, trying to figure out what fits and what doesn't fit with, with this exploration. But every time I get on a call with you or, or a video like this and we get a chance to start talking about the museums, I find myself like reinvigorated about this experience and, and just what we're gonna be looking at on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got the hikes, we've got the outdoor adventure, and then, you know, your access at these museums and, and just, you know, it's really, everyone I'm sure who's going on these trips has been to museums before, if they're, you know, this isn't, I'd be very surprised if anyone's taking a dinosaur trip and this is your first time visiting a museum, but it's something about, you know, you're going through, you're reading, you're taking your time, but you're going to be with us every step of the way uh, through the museums, helping to put more context to the things that we're seeing when we get back into, you know, when we're, hit, when we're hitting the highway, whether it be Route 66 or all the other highways that we're hitting around as we, as we go place to place, you'll be with us 
um, to talk through what we've seen, answer questions. So, you know, there's always opportunity in having you with us along the way to add more to this narrative, better understand what we're seeing, what we're going to see. Um, it's you're a great reference to have, and, and I think it's really going to unlock some of the mysteries of, of these museums that we're seeing throughout. So I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be amazing. Well said. I am so excited. The fact that we're mixing in um, real world today and we can tie it back to the past. And so the, the whole trip is this wonderful continuity of present and past and getting a sense of what it was like and the exposure. And I'll bring so many different things to the table from uh, just evolution and biology and how we do these things. So we'll make sure to have something for everyone if there's certain taxes. When you sign up, if you can let uh, Zach know the animals that you really like or the groups of animals, that way I can be 100% sure to point out the animals as we go across the trip and, and customize it to the individuals that are on the trip, that next level of bespokeness to make sure we cover the topics that they would like to hear about. Yeah, and as you mentioned, I mean, in this conversation revealed to me like, hey, we've got some access that uh, we didn't previously know we had. We haven't hit everything in these itineraries, um, even as you read them or watch this video, uh, that can happen on these trips. We're working in little surprises all along the way. There's going to be little things that are unexpected. So yeah, we're talking about the highlights, the, the, the things that we focused on in these itineraries, the points that we're going A, B, C along, but there's going to be a whole bunch of other stuff. And of course, this is your neck of the woods. Like we're, we're, we're on your home turf. You're going to be able to unlock things for us as well. We're, we're going to Coon Bluff with a guide. And I'm excited because I go, I've been to Coon Bluff in the hundreds of time. I've camped there. I, I bird there all the time. So I'm excited to see what a professional guide does at Coon Bluff. And I'll be able to add color. And if they can't find horses, well, I, I think we can go up the road a few miles. And uh, I, they're usually up a little farther north if they're not there. But that time of year in Arizona, the weather is really nice. It's starting to warm up. So the outside is, is really nice weather. It's not scorching hot and there's no hint of cold. And the, the animals should be out in force. The reptiles, just the, the number of lizards and potential snakes that we'll see. Uh, don't let that scare you away. I've only seen three snakes in all those hundreds of times at Coon Bluff, uh, unless you go intentionally looking for them. That's a different story. So this is this trip. Uh, it, it is a if if you like paleontology, if you like the Southwest, if you like the the whole natural history part of the world, uh, I think this would be one of those bucket list trips. I know that when we worked to put it together, I wanted to make it something that I would love to go on. And that's what we have. Yeah, that's it. You've been to all of these museums before. You have special access at these museums, but um, you know you're still excited about it. We're, we're really, I think I think it's going to be a pretty awesome. Uh, I can't wait. The countdown is already on. Uh, next video we'll be sharing. We'll be talking about that next trip: Red Rocks and Raptors, Utah and Colorado. Uh, really excited about that. So um, you'll be seeing that video out shortly. But we're starting it off with Route 66 a million years ago. Uh, it's it's going to be amazing. May 2nd to May 10th. Uh, sign up now before February 1st. Get that early bird special as well. Thanks so much, Brian. Uh, we'll touch base in a second uh, to talk about our Red Rocks and Raptors. Thank you kindly. Adios.